My name is Lizzie Emerson. I'm the graduate assistant for the Safe Zone Resource Center. And so today what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about Safe Zone, what we do on campus, how we serve the students that you'll all be teaching in the fall, but also what we're here to do for you as instructors and how I can help you out. Um, so just to give you a little bit of information about myself, uh, my name is Lizzie. I uh, have a master's degree in English, but I'm currently doing a PhD in higher ed administration. Um, but for about six years before I started my PhD, I was an English instructor uh, for a couple of years here at UA and then before at the University of Memphis and for part of that time I was a GTA as well. Um, so teaching is really near and dear to my heart. I know how difficult this job is and I'm so grateful for you. Um, but a lot of what I want to do is just make your lives a little bit easier if I can. Uh, so that's me. Safe Zone on the other hand. Whoop, there we go. Um, is a program on campus that's designed to help create inclusive environments for lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, asexual, and intersex identified individuals. Um, and the primary way we do that is by, uh, there we go. Uh, the primary way we do that is by trying to create a campus climate, a university climate, where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. Um, so we do that through a number of different things. We promote safe environments, both through my office. If you come to my office, you can tell it's a safe environment. It's covered in rainbows and glitter. Uh, but I also have coffee and tea and hot chocolate and snacks, and people know that it's a safe place to be. Um, we promote safe environments as well through our ally training program. So if you haven't been a part of that yet, that's something we'll talk about a little bit more in just a minute. Uh, but that's a great way to create safe and inclusive environments for students, faculty, and staff on this campus. We also advocate for individuals on this campus, whether that means through um, creating opportunities to have convert difficult conversations that need to be had through discussion groups and book clubs and things like that, or if it means working with people who are dealing with uh, figuring out how to report harassment and discrimination. We do all of those things. Um, we also provide resources for students, faculty, and staff on campus, whether that's help with your teaching and instructional materials, um, and we do provide educational resources for instructors, um, as well as connecting people to campus resources, whether they're going through a crisis or they need help with the Counseling Center or the Women's and Gender Resource Center, or if a student is experiencing homelessness or financial e need, what we do is connect students, faculty, and staff to those things that are here to help people make it through those difficult times in their lives. And we educate, both through our ally training program, which if you haven't participated in, you can all be a part of if, you, if you're interested. We offer seven open sessions throughout every semester. Um, and to do that, all you've got to do is go to our website and sign up for the session that fits your schedule and you can be a part of our ally training program. The other thing that we do to educate people though is work with students one-on-one -on -one with research projects if they have to do with, like, with gender um, identity or sexual orientation. Um, so don't send them to me for biology and stuff like that, but if it's a gender identity or sexual orientation project, you can send your students to me and, and we'll work through and I'll help provide them with some of those research resources. Um, or if it's helping instructors like yourselves, find materials for your class if you're going to have a difficult conversation about gender and sexual identity. Uh, we have a list of educational resources in our office that we offer to instructors. I also do class visits and guest lectures. If you want to have Safe Zone come in and have a conversation with your class before you engage in a conversation, I'm happy to do that as well. Okay. Is it working? Yay! Uh, so the thing we're most known for and the thing I've been plugging the most is our ally training program. Um, if you were in a program, um, then we would talk a whole lot more about things like campus climate and whatnot. But for today, just to give you a little bit of information about what our ally training program does, is uh, help participants develop a working knowledge of content and terminology relevant to LGBTQ identities. Um, re learn to recognize the impact of a negative campus climate, and we'll talk in a second about that. Uh, identify harassment, which as instructors and in GTAs, you're all mandatory reporters, so you have to do that anyway. Um, so we're there to help you with that. And apply these concepts and ideas to the things that you do on campus, whether it's in the classroom as an instructor or in the classroom as a student. Um, and our guiding principle for this is based on university's policies regarding student conduct and discrimination and harassment, uh, which prohibits discrimination and harassment on the basis of sex, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, and gender expression. So really what our training program is designed to do is to help you stay in accordance with those policies, those policies that we're all responsible to be a part of. Okay. 
Um, so to tell you a little bit about why my office exists, because um, a lot of people don't realize kind of what the situation is like and, and why we have places like safe spaces on campus. Uh, safe zone, which ca caters specifically to LGBTQ identities, is on campus because nationwide, an average of uh, or LGBTQIA plus identified folks are two times more likely to experience harassment and discrimination on their, on their university campus. And nationwide, they were three times more likely to either leave their institution or seriously consider leaving their institution as a result of the treatment that they experience. Um, and I can say the study is based from the state of higher education, state of, high, state of higher education for lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, and asexual individuals. That is a nationwide study that surveys schools from um, the east to the west coast, to the north to the south, and everywhere in between. This is a national average. This is not UA. UA scores roughly, let's see, we are currently out of 265 schools ranked in the study, um, 234th from the top. So we are far below this national average. This is aspirational data for us. Um, and so when you're thinking about working with the students that you see every day, you want to be thinking about what they experience, not just in your classroom, but also when they leave your classroom. Because most GTAs are working with first year students, which means that most of your students live on campus too. And so that campus climate piece is not just what your classroom is like, but it's also like what it's like when they leave too. It's in their residence halls, it's in the dining halls, it's on the quad, it's at the football games and all of these different things. And this is aspirational data for us. This is what we would hope to be able to provide for our students as a growing goal. It's not where we are right now. Okay, so I want to give you some terminology. If you come to the Safe Zone Ally training program, this will be an audience participation portion, and you'll have the opportunity to venture a guess at the definition of each of these terms. Because I've just got 15 minutes, and this bit usually takes us about 20 in general, um, I'm just going to go through it really quickly so that you've heard these terms before, um, and when somebody uses them in your classroom, you won't have to go Google them. Um, so LGBTQIA plus is the alphabet soup acronym that Safe Zone uses. It is longer than the typical acronym that you see. As a matter of fact, in academic work, we usually cut things off at the Q. Uh, but for the students that we represent, we represent intersex and asexual individuals too. And so we strive to use those letters in our acronym because we want to be representative of the students we work with on a daily basis. So that's why ours is a little bit longer. But we've got lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, intersex, and asexual. And all of those are very common terms that you'll hear. Um, I'm going to leave a couple of minutes for questions at the end. So if anybody has specific questions about these terms, I'll take them then but I don't want to go over time because I know this is the last thing you have to do today. So I'm not going to define them right now. Um, again, come to the Ally training program. Okay, um, so some just kind of general pro tips for working with students for setting an example in the classroom and establishing your classroom as a safe space and creating that positive classroom culture that you want. First and foremost, practice the golden rule and mirror and model the golden rule. Um, and honestly, if we would all just do this every day, if for one day everyone would just treat everybody else the way that they wanted to be treated, I probably wouldn't have a job. And I have mixed feelings about that. But we wouldn't need, places, we wouldn't need safe spaces and safe zones. Um, and so that's first and foremost. Exercise the golden rule. Also, uh, provide personal pronouns in your email signature. Uh, for students that don't have any idea of what the deal is with pronouns, they won't notice it at all. But for those trans and queer identified students who do use alternative pronouns, pronouns that other people wouldn't expect, normalizing that conversation and providing that example to them that you're giving your pronouns makes it clear that it's safe for them to give you theirs and to have that conversation with you. And so it's just a small thing that you can do that will make a big difference to the people in your class that need it. Also include a non-discrimination classroom environment policy on your syllabus, and Safe Zone can help with that. We have one written up in our teaching materials, and so if you go to our website, you can actually pull ours. It's really user-friendly and easy to read, um, and so that's a good place to get that information, too. Um, and decorate your space with inclusive materials. And I say this one tongue-in-cheek because I've been a GTA. I know you probably don't have space. 
um, so much as maybe you have like a corner in a broom closet somewhere if you're lucky. Uh, but if you do have a corner in a broom closet, um, please do decorate your space with inclusive materials and we can help with that too. I've got all kinds of flyers and brochures and things promoting the things, all of the different events and programs that we do on campus. If you want some flyers, I will give you some flyers uh, to decorate your space. So please do um, to do that. Okay, and then some last pro tips. Um, in difficult situations and navigating conversations with students and classroom discussions, listen to mirror language respectfully. If a person uses a term or pronouns or a name to identify themselves, um, try to, you, to do your best to mirror that language that they use. And this keeps you from getting into a weird place where you may ac accidentally make assumptions or use terminology that's inappropriate. If they identify themselves as queer, it's cool to use that term with them. If they identify themselves as gay, it's cool to use that term with them. If they say their pronouns are they, then there, try and use the pronouns that they give you. Mirror that language as much as you can. Also try not to make assumptions about sex, gender, and sexual orientation. Instead, if you need to know, and we don't always need to know, but if you do need to know something, um, ask open-ended general questions and make your best intentions known. So a simple question like, hey, I just want to be respectful, what pronouns do you use? Give somebody the opportunity to self-identify in a way that doesn't out them in front of other people, but also allows them to self-identify and has a, it is a question that doesn't have any underlying assumptions labeled in it. Um, so it's a good way to go about that. Uh, respect how each person chooses to identify themselves. And so our, our uh, kind of guiding rule here is trust that they're telling you their own truth. If a person tells you something about their identity, assume that they know themselves best. Um, even if what they tell you doesn't match what you see, uh, because it's important to remember that in a place where we have um, campus climate problems, in a place where people don't always feel safe to be themselves, sometimes a person may tell you something about themselves that they don't show to the rest of the world. So trust that that person is telling their truth. Um, and last but not least, certainly last but not least, understand that not everyone is or can be out in every context or situation. Every year, er, not even every year, every semester, Safe Zone has a student come to us who is experiencing homelessness as a result of being outed. And what usually happens is unintentional. They're out at UA with friends and faculty and staff that they interact with, and somebody accidentally tells the wrong person or posts the wrong picture to social media. If someone comes out to you, if you know something that is delicate, that makes a person vulnerable like this, um, assume that you shouldn't tell anybody else unless they tell you otherwise directly um, because you never know what the consequences of, for that person might be if the wrong person were to find out. All right, uh, that's all the content I have. So do you all have any questions for me? Yeah. Oh. I think we've got somebody coming around with a mic. I'm running. This is my <laughs> workout for the summer. <laughs> Get in your steps. So thank you for your interesting presentation. I um, was just wanted to know what form does discrimination against LGBTQ people usually take? Is there any kind of standard thing people should look out for? Well, um, if you come to the training, we spend a good amount of time talking about how to identify harassment. But generally, harassment is anything either persistent or severe that makes a person feel unable to work or be in a space safely. Um, and so that can take a number of different forms, whether it's jokes, epithets, um, comments. It can be everything from um, an uncomfortable brush on somebody's shoulder when they walk past or um, outright using derogatory language. There are a bunch, of different, a bunch of different things that harassment can look like depending on the situation. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's just those things that um, our guiding principle is what's called the reasonable person standard. Um, so if a person who is an objective observer were to uh, be in the position of a person who's experiencing harassment, would that person feel like they could safely exist in that space? And if an objective person, if an objective third person says no, then generally that means that that's harassment. But yeah, it can look like so many different things. It's really individual and unique. Thank you. Any other questions? And Lizzie, will you stick around for just a few minutes in case anyone does have questions for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Great. Thank you guys very much. Thank you very much.